Hello there, friends. I hope that you're doing well on this July 4th, 2019. You'll have to excuse any uh, noise from the background. My dad is just watching some uh, fishing videos on YouTube. Um, hope that uh, you're having a fourth, a good fourth, whether it's with friends, family, or even if you're alone. Hope that you... Uh, have a little bit of happiness today. And if you have to work, well, when you get off work, I hope you can enjoy the time. Anyway, uh, this is going to be a video about my experience with insomnia. So, it's been ongoing for, I think, not nine plus weeks now, ever since late April. So, I've never had sleeping issues before, uh, other than, you know, like the standard thing that everybody experiences of like a restless night here and there, but other than that, no problems. In fact, I would sleep too much. Felt like I could basically sleep on command, like everything would just make me sleep, you know? You eat just a little bit too much food or anything like that especially if it's carbohydrates and you just want to fall asleep you have a couple of beers you want to fall asleep just even uh laying in your bed which i would do way too much so it just uh definitely spent way too much time sleeping and never really successfully overcame it before then again maybe didn't uh, want to try hard enough because yeah you can get excited all you want but uh, you set that alarm clock for an early time and it goes off you can barely peel your eyes open and you tell yourself perhaps this was a bad idea <laughs> but whatever um, and yeah, so I'm not going to go into all the details and just, oh, poor me with the back. You know, I ended up with upper back problems. I don't know, I was going for a walk one evening, just started bothering me. It was hard to sleep unless, like, I didn't use a pillow. Just that position wasn't aggravating it. And then the next day it seemed okay. But then towards the evening, same thing, just felt even worse. And then I think that third night is when... It, it, the insomnia really hit um, and that was it um, so it's kind of this thing where your upper back hurts so it's tough to find a position well and they say you know statistically if you've had lower back issues which I have you can develop problems elsewhere and uh, so it was like you find these weird positions to try to lay in where it doesn't aggravate your upper back and then neck started to hurt so um, it's, it's something that I definitely don't wish on anyone because especially when insomnia is bad it is legitimately tr truly terrifying um, uh, when and during like it's really rough um, phases, whatever, um, so, yeah, it, it was, the first four to five weeks were really especially bad, um, you know, you just have these strings of nights where your rest, sleep, whatever, just consisted of probably every, like, 30 minutes, just tossing and turning every 30 minutes, getting up like I go lay down on the floor uh, on like my yoga mat and then go and then oh try to find another position on the floor and then this sort of pillow or use a towel and then go into the living room and lay on the couch because it sort of felt like oh wasn't being aggravated there and then you know just nothing's comfortable then you get in your bed and that's comfortable but it aggravate you know just in another way so it's just little bits of sleep that you get that way from sheer exhaustion and even then barely any of it. It's just that very, very light sleep where 
you feel yourself awake laying there and then just time goes by um, so stuff you know it, it a lot of it was a result from the upper back and neck issues but even you know even though when you'd find positions of comfort where it felt like oh okay in this I feel like I'm not being bothered by anything you just couldn't fall asleep and that's when it really was like shit man this isn't good um it's like your brain couldn't turn off if that makes any sense so just like sleep was never induced and like moments where you could feel yourself drifting off into sleep and almost snoring like you, you just like have this startle reflex where instead of you oh good finally you can dream off sleep and rest it's like your body or your brain or something was making sure to keep you awake instead where you'd get startled and it's like oh I was just starting to fall asleep and great um, now it's yeah now I'm wide awake as I had these days where it feels like you've been up for two three days and you're laying there you get startled awake due to whatever the hell is going on um, and it honestly feels like you could probably go outside and walk for five miles is you know it uh, it's really God, even just talking about it like I almost don't even want to talk about it because there were there were some I mean that's when that kind of stuff really feels like legitimately scary or is like I'm, I'm not resting I feel like I'm not turning off it feels like you're literally going crazy um god I said I almost don't even want to recount those shit man um and of course it was also a learning experience of talking about this stuff with your doctor and all the questions of like, ooh, have you have you been thinking of harming yourself, this or that? And it's like, no. Like, I literally can't sleep because of this back stuff, but also the... At some point I was just like, no, I'm not really depressed or anything because, I mean, like, you know, nothing nothing really changed. So... Um, and I've had periods of time before in the past where, yeah, I felt pretty damn depressed and all that, but never had any sleep issues, anything like that, but just, I don't know, um, I think I got, kind of described the neck issues and stuff, uh, and the doctor, or it was not, well, not the doctor, it was like an assistant, you know, oh, what you're describing sounds exactly like anxiety. So I was like, okay. So are they now going to start treating me for depression and anxiety with pills? Not the, like, legitimate pain that I am having that gets triggered by certain things. Like, think sitting in a chair with, like, a backrest. It just felt like something was digging into your spine. So that's why like driving was almost like I try to like get off the back because there were moments where I was like oh shit um god I think like, you know are they gonna da now do the it's all just in your head man you know that thing like I said just recounting those early early weeks and days and all that was is man you know, I lost my appetite I think I lost almost 10 pounds in one week because I just didn't want to eat anymore. I don't know what it was. Um, uh, it, I mean, yeah, it, it almost is like you you develop depression and anxiety, but it's because of like the pain you're having and the trouble sleeping. So, I mean, I don't know. Um, and... God, trazodone, which, oh great, oh she gave me a prescription for something, and you look at it, it's like, oh, it's used to treat depression, but also for insomnia, it's like, I just had to clarify, that uh, are you treating me for, 
you know, like, are, am I still being treated for back pain and issues sleeping? Or is this now, like, you think I'm depressed? And I was like, oh, no, let's just use for insomnia, too, all right? And basically it didn't do shit. I think I had one evening where I fell asleep and the rest, nothing. Um, so, and yeah, and the first four to five weeks basically felt... Like, my job was to be sick and go to endless doctors. I just go to doctor's visits, specialists, blah, blah, whatever. So that's why um, yesterday's video about the question still remains. That's why it's just so nice to feel like, you know, it's still ongoing. Not over yet, but way better. And, and you just feel like a more functional human being. Um, and so, uh, yeah, more doctor's visits, blah, blah, no muscle relaxants didn't do anything, the whole, oh, taking a leave, blah, blah, ibuprofen, like this, none of that really felt like it did anything at all, and missed time off from work, which was not like a vacation, it's like, well, oh, take a little time off from work. Oh, I'll come back and work shorter days. And, like, nope. That was bare. I mean, I think, like, God, that did not work well. Back to the doctor again. And I think I finally decided enough with this, like, meeting with an assistant crap. Uh, met with, like, the my main actual doctor I was able to get in. Um, went on prednisone. And she, you know, that's when I was like, bringing up the sleep issues too and I guess looking back now I should be thankful that um it's the doctor that's not not so willing to be like sure let me just give you a sleeping pill but you know the put me on prednisone and because it can cause insomnia too gave uh Zolpidem, aka Ambien yeah the the prednisone made me feel another type of <laughs> worse and didn't really feel like it did anything but who knows you know at this point between everything that happened it's hard to know what actually helped what didn't etc um and the the ambien god that was it i think i had one or two evenings where i felt like i actually fell asleep the other ones all it really did was make me feel at some point that like I forget that I'm laying in bed and then at around 5, 6 a.m. you become conscious that you're laying there. And so whatever sleep you get is like the worst kind and you feel groggy, sedated, just that like drugged up awful feeling like I don't miss that at all. Like I don't know how people get addicted to that stuff because Ambien just made me feel truly awful. So however my body processes it, it's like, no. Um, it was... God. Um, so... Then, you know, at some point, it's like whatever little physical therapy I was doing there. and between, Since that wasn't doing anything, she was like, you probably need to go to a specialist for this, go to the specialist, they order, had gotten an x-ray done early on somewhere else and it was didn't show anything other than the standard, hey, you're getting older, here's like a little degeneration, but it, oh, it could be this, you know. Um, it was the first time I actually had any sort of imaging done of my uh, back at all, so. But same thing, just do physical therapy, all right, I'll do it over here. Um, and, uh, but yeah, between the physical therapy I was doing there and the doctor, it's like, well, off to the specialist with you and got an approval for an MRI. Um, and, uh, so yeah, MRI showed a couple of small disc bulges and it's hard to know. Did it look that way at the beginning? Or was this an improvement? Who knows? But uh, 
Neck looked okay too, other than same thing. Here's a little degeneration, whatever. But basically like, well, let's try. Let's try a different physical therapy. Wherever you were going, maybe it wasn't good. So, uh, funny enough. Yeah, by the time I got around to that first appointment, um, just going to work that day. Because at some point, you know, it's like, I mean, I can't just endlessly stay home. So it's just force your ass, go to work, no matter what, just bear through the pain. And uh, it's pretty rough, you know neck tension just like start kind of feeling going numb here a little bit it's like but I've had a little bit of that before this so I said it was you know and it, and you know they say I think insomnia can cause you to be more sensitive to pain or something like that so it was just god um yeah, now I'm just rambling but yeah ironically enough after that first consultation that first day at work like bothered me way way less so it's like great after all of this and as I start this new better physical therapy whatever right now it gets better so I just committed myself to I'll do however many sessions you you feel I need to so I'm finishing up pretty soon here I think I have one more on Monday and yeah, at some point it was like, well, I mean, I don't want to be reliant on Ambien. So I think it's now been four weeks that I've been off of it. And it's like, well, Doc, what do you suggest? And she was like, I said, looking back now, I should be thankful that she's she's not the type to be like, yeah, let me... I mean, let's try this other sleeping pill because, you know, it's not a solution. Um, so, I think I was doing Benadryl and melatonin. And it's like, it, it didn't feel any worse than being on the Ambien. So, I was like, all right, well, I'll just do this for... Same thing, just kind of shitty, not great sleep. A lot of it just... A lot of it is that type where... You just feel yourself laying in bed and then time goes by and you're like oh it's time to now get out of bed and uh, I've, I think I've read that um, you do actually sleep it's just very poor quality sleep so it can you can look at that kind of stuff and be like oh I didn't sleep at all blah blah it's not really true it's just it's shitty awful sleep um, so, you know, it was good to be off the Ambien, still kind of groggy, whatever, not feeling great during the day, but not as shitty as it was taking the Ambien. I said, I'm just so happy to have been get off that stuff. I said, I don't know how people get hooked on that, because, uh, and then, um, let's see, it just kind of occurred to me. Well, you know, everything you Google about it, you, you keep coming across this, like, cog cognitive behavioral therapy and stuff and all that. And, I mean, I knew, I knew in my head that there's got to be a solution to this. And before you say, have you tried the green herb and all that stuff, yes, during the worst of it, I decided, you know, I need to try something, so... Tried, uh, you know, went to dispensary, tried CBD oil. Honestly, I didn't feel anything from it at all. Increased my dosage, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. If I felt anything, I could barely notice. It definitely did not help with pain or sleep or anything like that. So I don't know. Tried the uh, edibles, and it's like either didn't feel anything or it felt like too much and just like felt anxious beating heart and it's like well this sucks like I'm trying to relax and fall asleep and blah 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 and this is not what I'm not what I'm looking for yeah thankfully did not listen to the advice of uh 
general xylophone telling me to, dude, take the whole bottle. Yeah, because 20 milligrams. And uh, I kind of freaked out. If I hadn't had people tell me, yeah, this stuff can be normal. You just took too much. Um, I was nearly ready to go wake my parents up and say, hey, I don't know what's going on. I think I poisoned myself. Uh, take me to ER. Oh, God, that was awful. I, I, I don't... So that was the thing. It's like, I either didn't feel anything. Oh, let me break it up into little this and that. Like, it either didn't feel anything or it's like not good and and yeah oh I got the indica so I know the you know you, you get the right strain you know whatever um yeah either didn't feel anything or just like not good effects just I feel like my, my heart beating got during the worst of it it's like my muscles started to hurt especially my biceps felt weird and it was like Okay, well, I don't know. I, I don't get it. Like, this is what people are into. Um, so, and I did try vaping too, so, which was better than anything else. But it's the same thing. It's like, I can't tell if I'm relaxed or not, or it's just because it's so late in the day and I'm sitting down that, of course, I feel relaxed. So it was better. But still, you know, the only thing I did not do was try the actual green herb. But from the experiences I had, honestly, like, I just don't think it's for me. So, um, so that's okay. Uh, it's just a thing I don't, you know, I, yeah, I mean, it was, I was kind of in a desperate spot in life with all of that stuff sleeping and the pain and it's like well you know you live in a place where it's legal so and you've never done it before I mean is it worth maybe just worth a shot talk to the people in there see what they say and see, yeah I had my experiences just that's the way my body responds to it and processes it and whatever so and I don't just I didn't care enough to like oh let's you know try this other thing at some point it's like I just I said, I just don't think it's for me, so, um, so, you know, I just kind of decided, well, let me just see what I can look up on my own and read, because is this going to be a thing where you go to the doctor and say, I'm still having the sleeping issues, I need to solve it, and they send you to what, uh, a sleep specialist or a psychologist, and they'll just tell you to try something that you read about anyway, so how about I see if I can try something on my own and if it doesn't work etc then I'll go and see so I uh, came across this sleep restriction stuff where you basically you know you can spend too much time in bed where trying to sleep more being in bed more isn't necessarily gonna get you more sleep and can mess things up even further mess up your circadian rhythm and it's a mistake that people with insomnia make. So, you know, there's all sorts of, like, stuff that you can do. You know, I saw different variations. One was like, oh, you need to stay up 24 hours first night. And the other one, you know, it's like keep a sleep journal for two weeks and figure out how much time you're sleeping. And it's like, well, I don't know how much time I sleep. I'm sleeping because it feels like I'm not sleeping at all. But... You're also telling me that this is sleep. It's just bad sleep, so I like I couldn't figure out. So I like, oh if you're getting combined total of five hours in sleep, that's your sleeping window. You you might only be in bed midnight to five AM and that's it. So like I said, I just like I didn't really make sense to me because it didn't feel like I was sleeping, like I said. So I uh um Let's see, I just decided I will just pick a time, you know? I'll just pick a window. So the idea is you restrict yourself to being in your bed and sleeping only in that window. All other time you have to stay out of your bed and some people even like stay out of their room 
and you have to stay up no matter what, wake up at that time no matter what to. Um, it drives up your sleep pressure. Um, and it's meant to, like the sleep that you do get, it's meant to increase the quality of it too. And then over time you can increase that sleep window uh, further back or forward, whatever. So I just picked around midnight to 6 a.m. So, so yeah, it's been a little over a week and a half. Um, the effect has been pretty dramatic. It's not over, and I'm not deluding myself that, oh, I've now got this beat and everything's just wonderful. Um, it's just, the effect has been pretty dramatic. Happy, can continue on with it. Just increasing now my sleeping window from to around 11.30. Um, said in the previous video, I never thought I'd be happy to say that it feels good to feel sleepy and tired and that feeling of like your eyes closing. Because yeah, if you've struggled with insomnia, especially when it was really bad, boy, like that's the only thing you wish you could experience. So, um, it, you know, for the first couple of nights, I think I was still doing Benadryl, and it's like, well, I should... I mean, there's got to be a solution to this that doesn't require any pills or this or that. And I remember buying, you know, oh, natural sleep aids and this or that. I was like, man, oh, if this one doesn't work, try this other. I was like, man, I said this. This is just like a function of the human body. And it's not like you went through something traumatic is this it's just screwed up right now like there's got to be a way to fix this naturally without anything without any pills whatever so i got off the um benadryl and i think i read too if you take too much of it for too long it can be like a cause of dementia and stuff it's like great yeah um and then I, I was doing valerian root and magnesium, which didn't really feel like it was doing anything anyway. So after a few more days, I just decided I'm, you know, I'm not taking anything whatsoever. Um, so it was kind of the you know, first night was OK. Second night was awful. Third night was better. Like third night was amazing. <laughs> fourth night was mediocre fifth night was better so first week or so it was kind of this back and forth um but i viewed that as progress because it's like well i stopped taking everything and at least i'm getting some sleep you know hey here you know every other every other night hey <laughs> it's not going too bad i mean I'll, I'll take that that's progress and so last four nights um, have been pretty good to the point where I just I've started going to bed at around 1130 because it's just like I just can't keep myself up any longer um, just you know so just feel yourself drifting off and so been doing really well uh, getting up you know I set I actually didn't forgot to set my alarm last night and this morning still just kind of naturally woke up just got out of woke up and then got out of bed around 6 a.m so it seems to be i'll get in bed and maybe just lay in bed for around 20 30 minutes and then fall asleep and then around 5 30 um wake up and just kind of lay feel myself laying there in bed just kind of a little tired whatever but enjoying just still being there and then alarm will go off at around six um, and then I'll get up and just, I mean, I still lay down, but I just, you know, I might go lay down on the couch here and there because you can't stand all day or go sit at the computer or whatever. But I just told myself, you know, don't, I will not get in my bed whatsoever unless it's time to go to bed. Because one of the other things too, is you're supposed to 
retrain your relationship with your bed where it's it's a place of relaxation and sleep not this like oh god i i can't fall asleep this place of anxiety and restlessness etc which has been a complete uh i did a 360 and walked away right now a little joke that that i'm sure you get the joke um where, yeah, I mean, I used to be in bed all the time, probably due to the depression and all that, and sleep all the time. Even when I wasn't sleeping, I would just lay in bed, do everything in bed. I spent way too much time in bed, where it does almost make me wonder how many of my back problems came from spending too much damn time in my bed, because at some point they do say that past a certain amount of hours in a day, it is harmful to just continue laying there um and yeah um yeah i would have earlier on there yeah i'd look at my bed and just feel like terror and anxiety where it's like great i know it's time to sleep but this is just gonna suck right so yeah um because i started to keep myself up so late by the by the time you get in bed you can't help but start to feel relaxed because you're finally in a I have like a firm mattress but it's uh I just find it comfortable so you know slowly it went towards like yeah that that anxiety about about it uh started to disappear and said last last four nights have been really good and they and I'm prepared to have I'm sure there will be evenings where it's like it feels like you've gone back to not sleeping again or something like that. So I'm not, you know, this is not like, oh, I'm finally over everything and out of the woods. It's just a thing that I do now and will continue to do so. Um, and I think just into the future, you know, um, I'm not going to go back on any of it now. Um, like we're now, oh, now I can just stop doing everything and go back to how I used to be. No, I think it's just kind of the new normal. Slowly increase my sleeping window a bit more and it's, I think that'll just be it, you know? Only getting in my bed when it's actually time to sleep for the time that I have set aside um, so that you have like a normal, healthy relationship with your bed, not whatever um so still ongoing but it's it's working you know it uh it's working it's the days are more consistent and i'm not really waking up during the night it just feels like at some point when i do fall asleep i lay there until a little bit of time before it's time to wake up and so the the screwed up sleeping pattern I had is being fixed my circadian rhythm is uh, I feel like normalizing the sleep that I am getting is of like a higher quality but I mean it's still like yeah I still feel tired because it's not as much as maybe I need and all that but I'll I'm 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 not I'm you know, just taking my victories, you know, and appreciating them. So, better than how it used to be. So, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Now it's just kind of continue it on. And keep praying and hoping for the best. So, you know, I it's been... I'm not on any pills whatsoever. I can't, once again can't tell you how freaking happy I am to not be on the Ambien. Uh, no pills, no supplements, no nothing. It's just a, uh, it, it feels like your body functioning like it can and should without any sorts of assistance and this or that. So, um, and yeah, the, the bed feels like a place of relaxation. So, you, you know, so a lot of that, I just kind of 
did what I read and appealed to me and there's a lot more to it and so far I think it's going in a good direction um, you know there's sort of this dream journal of like oh when you got out of bed and this or that or yeah the one thing I didn't agree with either two that I read was they say and I kind of saw comments from people on the internet saying something similar was you know, oh, well, if you don't fall asleep within 15 minutes, you just need to get out of bed and go to another room and do something. Well, uh, okay. I mean, if I do that, it feels like, or especially early on, I'll always be in another room. But but also, like I said, thought thought I read, you know, some of these articles, a lot of them mentioning, yeah, you're, even though it might feel like you're not sleeping, you are sleeping. It's just poor quality sleep, so it just sort of feels like you're half asleep, half awake or something. So if that's the case, and I feel myself still sort of conscious there, if you will, why would I interrupt that and go to another room? You know what I mean? So that kind of stuff, like, didn't really make sense. These people are saying this, but then these ones are like, oh... No, no, no. And how do I know if 15 minutes have gone by? Because they say, don't check the clock, don't this, that that's bad, you know, you're training yourself in a bad way. So some of that stuff seemed kind of inconsistent and didn't make sense to me. I said, what made sense to me was the, you create yourself a sleeping window and you can only go to bed and try to sleep during that time and that's it. Got to keep yourself awake otherwise, and as soon as that alarm clock goes off, you got to get out of bed. That made sense to me, um, so that you're not doing this chunks throughout the day and this or that. You're just like really tiring yourself out, and you can only be within that window. So, I don't know. Seems to be working well. Uh, this is drywall. This is wood. Going to knock on wood. And uh, just... I said I I did a lot of praying folks during the worst of like the back issues and then with this sleep stuff I did praying too of like cuz it uh it just you just don't feel like a functional person it's like man like is this the rest of my life now like yeah I can see how like you could develop even worse depression and stuff because of this. I mean, I said that's I said just going back around to the beginning where like I don't wish this shit on anyone and during the worst of it like it truly is legitimately scary like when it just this basic human function <laughs> that you're supposed to be able to do and you've been able to do your entire life and seemingly nothing has happened and now it just feels like you can't sleep. You can't ever turn off. Um, so, I don't. Am I? Um, let's see. My relationship with coffee is better. I don't. Um, I don't. I don't drink any coffee past noon now. Other than maybe here and there, I might have a little decaf. Yes, I I actually started drinking decaf sometimes. And I'll only have just like one or two cups uh, in the morning. And that's it. Drink water. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Definitely have not been drinking much at all. You know, a shot of cognac here and there with my dad. But yeah, the uh, car. It was interesting. It's like, remember some evenings where it's like you didn't feel any pain, but it felt like you would lay in bed and just feel your heart beat. And so you could, like, that was constantly in your mind. Or just like this. It's like, what? the fuck is happening to me it's like okay this is good I'm laying here whatever and I and I 
don't feel any pain in my upper back but what it like was this always this way but in a normal functioning mind you don't notice the it, it was just fucking crazy that's why the the experience with the cannabis it made that feeling even worse where you were so in tune with your like blood you know like your heartbeat and just like that pulse you get in your neck too where that's all you could think of is like hell yeah well i'm not gonna fall asleep now obviously um man i don't know um it's uh you know i prayed for just there's got to be a way <laughs> to handle this without Oh, let me look up pills and see if I can ask my doctor for some other pills. Because like, that's not a solution. Um, maybe you find a pill that works for you. And uh, but what happens when you get off of it? And I said, I, it's not like I went through something traumatic. So in that situation, maybe I can understand. But for me, like there, there has to be a way to solve this. And so I'm glad just occurred to me like I said maybe maybe it was an answer to prayers of you know you kind of help yourself but you're given the little push that you need you read up on this stuff and like all right well that looks interesting I'll give it a shot what else do I have to lose I mean I'm up anyway so I might as well just not be in bed and do something maybe get some reading done watch little YouTubes or whatever so um so the upside to all of this, folks, is the fact that, well, it's given me a lot of free time in the day since I'm not sleeping so much. So I'm, I'm viewing it as a positive, you know. Um, I used to complain about sleeping too much. And uh, I said, almost in a weird way, it's like all of this stuff was meant to happen for you to overcome, start overcoming some shit about yourself to kind of regain some control over your life and, and you know, not, not just keep sleeping it away. I mean, I'm getting up at six in the morning each day almost like it's nothing. And that, God, felt almost impossible in the past. Got all this extra time in a day that I would sleep away now it is like, well, shit, got all this time. What can I do with it now to be productive? And just my relationship with sleeping in my bed is way better now. Not this like, oh, just whatever, man, I'm just depressed and I just like sleep, whatever. Now it, it does feel like a thing where you use it to legitimately relax and restore yourself not just like uh, you know sleep away your life and uh, I don't know so in a weird way I'm almost grateful that it all happened because it has forced me to fix some things and uh that's good. Uh, that's good. It is so interesting where I used to say, you know, if you don't... I mean, like, if you're getting signals from life, God, whatever it is to do something, and you don't do it, at some point those signals will be much louder. And so the signals, let's just say... Definitely became louder, didn't they? And it's like, now you have no choice but to confront that and such. So, yeah, and just kind of like trying to function and such was uh, very beneficial too, where it's not just a thing you're always dwelling on. Oh, I have sleeping issues. Poor me. I'm not sure I can do anything to it. Just like, alright, it is what it is. I'll try to function to the best of my abilities. Still got to move on, move forward. 
do things, take care of things, live. So it's just sort of funny. Just sort of funny how that works out. If this was a lesson by life, God, my guardian angel, the universe, whatever you want to say, folks, I uh, I definitely learned uh, learned it. So I honestly don't even feel like I can go back to sleeping fucking like 12 hours a day or something during like the I used to really be super lazy and just be in bed uh, it's just sort of funny how that works out alright folks um, I have no idea how this turned into a 45 fucking minute video <laughs> um, uh, anyway um I wish, wish you guys a happy 4th. Uh, I don't even know what time it is now. God. Uh, anyway. It's going good. If you have issues with sleeping, um, I don't know if it'll do anything for you, but it's worth a shot. Um, I didn't do things in the most scientific manner and under the guidance of a doctor or whatever, but I figure... You can, you know, you don't need to go to a doctor for everything. I mean, we have the internet. We can read about stuff and try stuff out and see if it works. And if it's time to go to a specialist, whatever, sure thing. But you can try stuff out on your own, too. So it's, it's worth a shot. So seems to be going well. And I'm thankful and grateful for that. And we'll continue on with it. So, I think that's everything. I don't think there was anything else. And, uh, yeah, just uh, a general appreciation for some things, you know? That's why hopefully you can kind of understand why some of my stuff has probably just outlook viewpoint whatever even if it's not major like some stuff has definitely changed like the, the last two months has forced me to really uh change some of my uh, outlook mindset the way i view things blah blah um hopefully this gives you an idea just like a lot a lot, man, fucking happened. Um, I mean, early on, I mean, I even went to, like, a church and bought a cross and had it asked for it to be blessed by a priest because I lost my cross long ago. And just even, like, put a, like, bought a candle and put it under a whatever. Um, even bought holy water. And just came home and burned incense, like frankincense. I don't know. And just it was just like, man, something about everything felt wrong. That's really the only way I can explain it. Just something about how everything went and how everything seemingly came out of nowhere. And you you know, like I went from never going to the doctor to now all wait to just like constantly going to the doctor and it wasn't just the back and sleeping issues, it was the like, hey man, you got like high blood pressure and your mom has high blood pressure, so you might wanna finally think about this too and just like you know, X rays and an ultrasounds for the kidneys and stuff like that, just to make sure you don't have like this thing that your mom had and just re exam you know, re examining some relationships that's not, not worth going into. Just let's just say taking a lot having to be a lot more responsible for things in your own life and health. Way more than I mean it like before it was like, oh, 
I have to go to that doctor, you know, just super lazy, whiny, whatever. And then it was, it became, when, when's the soonest I can go to get this imaging done or, or whatever. Um, I mean, I made a complete 360, sorry, I can't ever not do that dumb joke. Uh, it was, it was, I mean, even my mom made a comment of like, wow, you really took, took this on and like really noticed a change in you though. I mean, I even, I even, like I was even on Indeed and applied for some jobs like during the worst of the back pain. I mean, I remember filling out this application and just like, I was so tired. Like, and just, like, even my fucking, like, upper abs started to hurt. I don't fucking know, man. I didn't even know what to write. Was I even co cogn co you know, writing this in a way that made sense? And uh, I actually had a, a phone interview and even an in-person interview that I went to. I was just like, well... Trying to bear through the pain. How much does it show on my face here? And uh, it seemed like it went pretty well, but I mean, I, I didn't get it. As they said I interviewed well, but uh, just somebody else had more experience and gave me some ideas for uh, volunteering something like that at places to possibly get some more direct experience with stuff that I made a mental note of. Um, so it was like, I don't even know why I was applying. It was just because I was tired of like when I was spending some time at home off of work, hoping for the prednisone or whatever to, if that was the case, um, um, I was bored. So I was like, what the hell? I wasn't even having my heart set on it, but just something to do. Um, so, you know, I, I'm proud of myself for what it's worth. Um, I know it's not much, but, you know, it, it was something. And I'm just extremely grateful that it's all now gone in a much better direction. Still got a ways to go with things. Um, the upper back isn't too bad. Still having some neck tension and little bits of pain here and there um i mean as i've described sleep issues i'm working on but that's fine i mean it's just i'm grateful that there is that improvement that it is and i have to acknowledge that this has lasted much longer than anything i've had before but i mean there's people out there who have shit lasts for like months and months and years and years and stuff they never even get over so like I'm not going to complain about it's just been a learning experience from it all sometimes you don't just get over it in a week and sometimes you have a whole lot of shit to uh take care of so just be grateful when it does start to get better and I said, whatever improvements here and there, as slow as it might be, you know, I, I will take it. So, and anyway, God. Oh, how did this turn into almost an hour long? Anyway, <laughs> on that note, I will actually end the video. Um, you folks have a good hunt. <coughs> I'll see you later. Bye-bye.